The title of my speech is What Gear Culture Can Teach Us About the USA's Reaction to COVID-19. What was our reaction to the responses of COVID-19? Protest over mask mandates, home quarantines, and restrictions of large gatherings? Why? Why are so Americans so torn on these subjects when they were put in place, these policies were put in place by elected officials who have the ultimate goal of keeping us, our loved ones, and our neighbors safe and healthy? Well, that's easy, and that's what we're going to talk about today. It can be explained and visualized through Geer Hofstede's cultural comparison model. Before I can go on, I have to give you a little bit background on who Geert Hofstede is. Geert was a renowned anthropologist who spent the many latter years of his life studying cultures across various countries. What he found was that countries can be compared on a model of six pillars. Individualism versus collectivism, indulgence versus restraint, short-term versus long-term orientation, uncertainty avoidance, and masculinity versus feminism. And now the last one, masculinity versus feminism, is worded, the wording is outdated. It can be best described as whether or not a country focuses more on profit and being the best, or they put more importance on health, family, and a work-life balance, rather than profit. The three pillars that we're going to be focusing on today are indulgence versus restraint, short-term versus long-term orientation, and individualism versus collectivism. Geert's model tells us that the United States is more indulgent than, say, our Japanese counterparts. That can tell us why people were still going out to bars and clubs when we were told not to. We do not like to withhold our desires. We like to go for what we want. We have this stronger sense of freedom where if somebody tells us to wear a mask, we may have second guesses or we may, be, you know, because somebody is telling us, we're thinking about why someone is telling us rather than the purpose of it, right? We don't like to be told what to do. This is in our culture. We do not like to constrain or restrain our, our desires. When in all actuality, we're told what to do every day through subconscious cues. We're told to go at green and stop at red, to drive on the right side of the road, to go to school, to have kids, to get married. We're told to pay taxes. I don't make mention of this to say that our culture is right or wrong, what we should or shouldn't do. I make mention of it because it's very important to understand our reactions to some of life's everyday decisions. In order to understand the next pillars, I'd, have, I'd like to make mention of the stock market. We as investors look to quarterly earnings in order to gauge whether or not we should invest in a company. Others may argue that a better strategy would be to look at each quarterly earning over a long-term period of time in order to truly assess how the company is growing, maturing, and whether or not we should invest. The focus on a company's earnings every three to four months rather than every one to three to five to seven to ten years is a great example of how the United States is a short-term oriented country. As we here in the United States are focused on the days, months, and years ahead of us, someone in, say, the country of South Korea would be thinking about their entire lifespan and maybe one or two generations out. This thought process of, of thinking about how every decision that we make can affect the rest of our lives and the generations to come is an example of a long-term oriented country. The final model of comparison is individualism versus collectivism. And what that tells us is that here in the United States, we're more focused on ourselves and maybe our immediate family rather than another Asian country where they would be focused on the entire community. We could solely look at this pillar and begin to understand some of the ways that we reacted here in the United States when these responses were put in place for COVID. Here in the U.S., we have a strong desire to be unique, to not be told what to do, to live out our desires. We're more focused on ourselves, our lives, and maybe the lives of our immediate family. All I mean by that is that we are thinking about our career, our education, what we need to do to take that next step. Our want to be unique, not told what to do, and to live out our desires is what makes us an individualistic society. 
for example, Southeastern Asian countries, they would be thinking about how their life affects everybody else's life and how they could position the things that they do in order for the betterment of, of their community. Some know that they're healthy, that they may not have severe symptoms if they contract the virus. However, they also know that as a responsibility to take care of their community, their loved ones, their neighbors. Again, I'm not here to tell anyone what is right or wrong, what we should or shouldn't do, which culture is the most effective or not. What I am saying is that we realize our cultural tendencies and how that affects the everyday decisions we make. What I do believe to be important is that we here in the United States, as citizens of one of the most powerful nations in the world, that we understand not only our international neighbors' cultural tendencies, but our own. And knowing this, knowing the cultural tendencies of our neighbors and of our own, can help us make the best and most effective decision. Thank you.